Developed in the 18th century, occupational therapy may be healthcare's best kept secret. On today's episode of How Do I Become, we examine occupational therapy assistance, or OTAs. The American Occupational Therapy Association, or AOTA, says occupational therapy practitioners enable people of all ages to live life to its fullest by promoting health, preventing or living better with injury, illness, or disability. This includes helping children with disabilities function in school and participate socially, helping those recovering from injury to regain everyday skills, and supporting the older members of the population experiencing physical and cognitive impairment or decline. An occupational therapist, or OT, will evaluate a patient, and the OTA will carry out the treatment plan. OTAs rely on their knowledge of occupational therapy interventions, anatomy and physiology, psychology, and psychosocial approaches to care, to modify treatment plans to each client's specific needs, as well as to providing the physical and emotional support needed to be successful. Creativity is a must. OTAs work in settings such as assisted living facilities, community centers, corrections facilities, public and private schools, healthcare practitioners' offices, home health services, hospitals, rehabilitation centers, retirement communities, skilled nursing facilities, the government, military, and workplaces like offices and factories. OTAs typically find themselves directly treating patients, helping them achieve their goals. Additionally, many settings have OTAs adhere to productivity requirements. This can be achieved one-on-one -on -one or in a group setting. Occupational therapy is a healthcare profession. Therefore, OTAs can expect a lot of paperwork, tracking client progress, and filling documentation. Another aspect of the OTA's role is communicating with and educating family members and caretakers who are instrumental in treatment success. The role of the occupational therapy assistant can be physically demanding. Depending on the setting and current census of the facility, an OTA can easily find themselves with a caseload of 15 plus clients in a day. On the other end of the spectrum, a census could be low and clients could refuse treatment, thus leaving the OTA without much work for the day, limiting earnings. For many, the connections made with clients on a daily basis are one of the more rewarding aspects of the OTA's daily routine for both the OTA and the client. The first steps to becoming an occupational therapy assistant are earning an associate's degree in applied sciences and entering a ACOTE accredited OTA program and earning an associate in science occupational therapy assistant degree. The program could soon require prospective OTAs to earn a Bachelor of Science degree. A critical part of the AAS OTA degree program includes Level 1 and Level 2 fieldwork. Level 1 being more observational, where an OTA student does rounds in a variety of settings observing certified OTAs, or COTAs, getting a first-hand look at what an occupational therapy assistant really does. Level 2 fieldwork allows an OTA student to apply classroom curriculum in the real world. Upon completion of coursework and fieldwork, OTA students must sit for their board exams. Passing the National Board of Certification for Occupational Therapy, or NBCOT, exam allows for OTA certification. Certified Occupational Therapy Assistants, or COTAs, must then apply for licensing to practice. Rules and regulations may vary state to state, so check with your state's Occupational Therapy Licensing Board. And of course, let's not forget about continuing education. We'll provide a link in the description to AOTA's summary for each state's requirements. And now for everyone's favorite topic, money. According to the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, the mean annual wage for COTAs across the nation was $63,420 per year. 
home health agencies and assisted living facilities scored among the highest paying places of employment in the field. CODAs in California and Nevada are among the highest paid in the nation, with an annual mean wage of $73,930. It should be noted that Idaho, Michigan, and Indiana rank among the lowest paying states in the nation for COTAs when considering annual mean wage. According to the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, through 2029, overall employment of occupational therapy assistants are projected to grow 35%. That's almost nine times faster than the combined growth rate of all other jobs in the U.S. This is largely in response to the aging baby boomer generation and a growing elderly segment of the population. Keep in mind when entering this field, Demand for occupational therapy services is related to the ability of patients to pay either directly or through health insurance. Overall, with illness, injury, and impairment of the elderly segment of the population, the job outlook for OTAs is pretty impressive. One final note, COTAs working to advance their careers can take advantage of bridge programs to earn a master's degree in occupational therapy. Speaking of bridges, Catch our episode on occupational therapists by clicking above or by following the link in the description. So what do you think? Is occupational therapy one of healthcare's best kept secrets? Let us know in the comment section below. Be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. This is Katherine Franco, and I'll see you next time on How Do I Become.